There's a really, uh, there's a great quote from the founder of the Brewdog Brewery in Scotland who says, um, uh, discounting is like the crack cocaine of business. You're you're the dealer and the junkie, and you get addicted, and you just can't get off it. But once I was doing a, I was doing a workshop with a legal firm about pricing, and um, by accident rather than design, there was um, there was only one female in the room, and at some point during the workshop, she turned around and said, "Discounting is like a one night stand, you know." And everybody's jaw just dropped and there was this deadly silence in the room. Um, and she looked around and she said, I think I better explain what I meant there. You discount once and you get a reputation for doing it. And, and it is true. You know, if you, look at, if you look at retailers in normal economic times, um, if they didn't have a sale on, there was no footfall in the shops whatsoever because they had conditioned the market to, to discounting, um, you know, and the discounting is like a one night stand is, that, is actually true. The greatest friction, and, and it, it's, it's actually changing, but the greatest friction was between pricing and sales because pricing thought of sales as the unpricing department and sales thought of pricing as the sales prevention department. <laughs> right, so you could never win. But you know, the really interesting thing in large organizations is that pricing touches every single part of the business, whether it's legal through the T's and C's, whether it's um, it's finance because the CFO wants to make more money, whether it's sales because the sales director wants to sell more units, operations because of enablement, enablement and onboarding and stuff like that. So there's, there's often, um, hardly any part of a business that doesn't get touched by you know changes to a pricing model pricing strategy communicating to customers marketing are in there and stuff like that um, so that t that tension is, is has been there for a lot for a long time between um, sales and pricing in particular but I think a lot of business the smart businesses are really changing that um, that approach now and they actually think okay um, Here's my here's my product team, and they're doing the value creation. Um, here's my and here's my sales team, and they're talking to the customers. And with my pricing, I'm extracting the value from the product I've created, and so forth. And in that model, everybody's sort of moving in the same direction, rather than up against each other like they would have been in the the sales versus pricing model. I think for me, the key to discounting is that it's a negotiation, not a surrender. So if a customer wants a discount, you need to get something in return. Um, and whether that is a, is a deeper share of wallet or a wider share of wallet, that can just be the, you know, a simple principle that you adopt to say, we, we do give discounts, um, but we need something in return. And I'm not anti-discounts because if you go back, um, 10, 15 years ago, the average level of discounting in, you know, in most markets might have been 10, 20%. It's proliferated incredibly since then. I mean, you've just given, you know, all these, all these retailers and so forth. And it's now ingrained in the customer's psychology because they love the thrill of the hunt, of finding a discount, and then the thrill of the kill of getting a discount. Because once you get the discount, You've got the bragging rights that you can go and, you know, plaster all over social media and so forth. It's great for social media. Um, so discounting is not going to go away. And it doesn't matter whether it's a B2B market or a B2C market. It's here to stay. But you need to manage it strategically.